Hello everybody, today I wanted to show you my Steam Deck emulation setup. There's actually a lot of ways to accomplish setting up emulators on the Steam Deck, but just like my Windows on Steam Deck video, I like keeping these projects separate from the Steam OS side. So for now, I think the best way to do this is to use a small USB-C thumb drive and run an operating system called Batacera from it. Unlike putting Windows on the Steam Deck, which is best used with a fast SSD, Emulation and Bodicera doesn't require much in the way of speed, so in this case, a slower USB drive will still run fine. A great thing about Bodicera is that the Steam Deck version of it is pretty much set up with good settings for each system it supports, and it includes extras like the system-specific side bezels. The worst part of Bodicera though is actually getting your BIOS and ROM files onto the drive. I wish it was an easy drag and drop from any computer, but it's not, so I'll go over two methods later on that you can use to move files around. So all you need for this is a thumb drive that has a USB-C connection on it. I got this one a while back that has a USB-A on one side and a USB-C on the other. So let's go to my Windows computer and I'll show you how to set this up. First, let's download the Botocera image. The official website is botocera.org and from here you can navigate to the download section. You'll see a build just for the Steam Deck that you want to download. Click the direct link to the download and make sure that you read the note that says to only update to the beta channel. That's for after Botticera setup. The next required download is Balena Etcher. The website is balena.io slash etcher. Here you can choose the version you need. I'm going to go with the portable window version, but if you're doing this on the Steam Deck, get the Linux version and install it. Once the downloads are done, plug in the USB drive and open up Etcher. Choose Flash from File and find the Batocera ISO image, which is probably in your downloads folder. Click Open. Next is the Select Target and make sure it's the USB drive you plugged in. You may have to show hidden drives, but this will also show your main OS drives on your computer, so be careful not to choose one of those. Check mark the USB drive, hit Select, and then Flash. Depending on the speed of the drive, it might take a while, but you just have to wait for it to finish. It'll go through a flashing phase, and then it'll do a verification phase. You can skip this verification part, but I recommend you let it run its course in case something was wrong with the flashing. Once it's done, it'll say flash complete, which means you can close the program and remove the USB drive. Now we need to boot into Batocera at least once for the initial setup. Make sure the Steam Deck is off and plug in the USB drive. Access the boot menu by holding the volume down button and pressing the power button. Choose the USB drive in the menu and Batocera will boot. Now this setup is fully automated, but it does take a while. On my slower drive, I thought it actually froze a couple of times too. Particularly, it stayed at this 75% uh, time for a while. If you have a faster and smaller storage drive, it might go quicker, but it took about 4 minutes to finish on my 128GB USB drive. Then after it stayed at this blinking line for a long time too, about 3 minutes for me. You'll know it's done though because the speakers will play some loud startup music when Batocera finally does load. Well now you're done. At this point you can mess with some of the free ROMs and apps included. The buttons and controls are already configured but you can also remap them in the settings menu. We're ready to add our own ROMs now but before that I want to go over a way to boot into Batocera without having to go into the Steam Deck boot menu every time. So this was a great tip from my Windows on Steam Deck video from commenters Cho Yun and Blues Elbu 2 Basically, it'll make the Steam Deck boot into any plugged in USB drive automatically without pressing volume down at startup. This requires entering the BIOS, which is accessed by holding the volume up button and then pressing the power button. Once this menu loads, choose the setup utility option. Be careful about changing any settings in the BIOS menu as it could possibly cause problems though. We'll only be changing settings in the boot category. Select the add boot options and we're going to change it to first. Remember that it was set to auto if you ever want to change it back. The USB boot setting should also be enabled but that's set by default so you probably don't have to change that. Head down to the exit category and choose exit saving changes and select yes to verify. Now when I have my USB drive plugged in, it should automatically boot into whatever operating system is on the drive. If you want to boot into the Steam again, just turn on the Steam Deck without a USB drive plugged in. Super simple. Thanks for the tip Chao Yan and Blues Elbow 2. Now on to putting ROMs onto the Batsasara drive. 
The hardest thing to do on Batisera is actually getting your own BIOS and ROM files onto it. Batisera has a lot of different methods for file management that you can actually check out on their website wiki page. They're not exactly easy, but they do offer decent instructions on how to do them. I think the easiest method they provide and the one I use the most is to transfer the files wirelessly from another computer, so we'll go through that now. In order to use this method though, you need to have connected to your Wi-Fi from Batasera. Access the menu in Batasera, choose Network Settings. Wi-Fi is disabled by default, so we need to enable it. Once we do that, it'll give us the option of entering the Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi key. Choose your Wi-Fi ID from the menu, and then go to the Wi-Fi key to enter your password. It might take a minute, but if you enter the password correctly, it'll show a Wi-Fi enabled pop-up. And when you enter the network settings again, it'll show your IP address and that is connected. The host name you can change, but let's keep it as Batasera because we'll be using that for the next step. Now leave the Steam Deck on and head to your computer. You'll have to download and install more free software to transfer files through your Wi-Fi network. Batasera recommends using WinSCP for Windows, but there are a lot of other similar free software for Mac, Windows, and Linux that you can use if you have a preference or a different system. For now, just follow the instructions and use WinSCP. Download WinSCP from the link and run the setup program. Accept the license agreement and choose Typical Install. I honestly prefer the commander interface, but Batasera recommends the explorer interface, probably because it looks similar to normal Windows folders. Hit next and install. I'm going to uncheck the getting started page here and finish. On the first run, you'll need to type in the login information for the Steam Deck. This is where you'll use that host name, which should be Batosera, all caps. Port number is fine at 22. The default username is root, all lowercase. And the password is Linux, all lowercase also. Hit save so you don't have to type this all over again. Click on OK and let's log in. Hit yes on the warning and enter the password Linux again if it asks. Now we're in the Batasera USB file structure. There's a ton of files and folders, but what we're interested in is the user data folder. That's where you'll see the BIOS folder and the ROMs folder. The ROMs folder also have pre-named folders for all the systems Batasera supports, so that's where we want to move our ROMs to. The BIOS folder is where we put our BIOS files if the system you're emulating requires them. I'm going to be adding Mega Man X for the SNES, which doesn't require a BIOS file. So back to the ROM folder, look for SNES. I did run into an error here when I first tried to drag and drop, so I had to restart my computer. It sounded like WinSCP couldn't load something it needed. Anyways, after restarting, I was able to drag and drop a copy of Mega Man X from my desktop, and it worked fine. That's pretty much it for the Wi-Fi method. If you go back to your Steam Deck, it should show Mega Man X in the Super Nintendo section. If it doesn't, just restart or refresh the library. The next part of this video will be for if you don't have another computer and you need to add ROMs from the Steam Deck itself. You can actually transfer files from the Steam Deck desktop to the USB drive. The shared drive is where we need to put our BIOS and ROM files. The problem is we don't have permissions to make changes, so we need to get around that. First, we need to get the path of the shared folder. Right click or left trigger on the Steam Deck on the shared folder and choose properties. We need the mounted on path, so highlight it and copy it. Now open the console and we need to set a password for Linux. The command is password with P-A-S-S-W-D. Now set a password. It won't show what you type, so be careful using the on-screen keyboard and then hit enter. Retype the same password and hit enter again. Now we need to type this command in. sudo space chmod space dash capital R space 777 space and then use the paste key so it'll fill in the path that we copied earlier. Hit enter and then you need to type in the password you set earlier and hit enter again. Now you should be able to change or add files on the drive. I'll just copy my Mega Man ROM here that I had on my desktop. You should see your ROM in the folder and then the next time you boot into Batasera the game should be in your Super Nintendo section. Well I hope that helps everyone enjoy your Steam Deck more. Until next time.